Jolene invested $13,200 in a savings account that paid 7.5% interest compounded annually. The function used to represent this investment is A of T, where A is the accrued value of the account after T years, and we're asked to use our function to answer the following two questions. Let's first take a look at our exponential function though. Notice how it's in the form of y equals a times b raised to the power of x, where a, the initial amount, is 13,200, and the base b, also known as the growth factor, is one plus r, where r is the annual interest rate compounded annually. So notice how the base is one plus 7.5 percent, or 1.075. Our first question, we want to determine how much money Jolene will have after 12 years, and we're asked to run to two decimal places or to the nearest cent. So let's do this on the calculator, and because we're going to be solving the second part graphically, let's go ahead and enter the entire function in y1. So we'll press y equals. If there are any old functions, we should clear them, and now we'll enter the new function that we'll use x instead of t. So we have 13,200 times 1.075, close parenthesis, raised to the power of x. And now there are several ways to find our function value a of 12. We could just substitute 12 for t, but because we already have our function here in y1, we can go back to the home screen by pressing second mode, and we could press vars, right arrow, enter, select y1 by pressing enter, and then in parentheses, enter 12. So y1 of 12 is a of 12. And again, just to make sure we understand, this is the same thing as just substituting 12 for t here, 13,200 times 1.075, close parenthesis, raised to the power of 12, will give us the same result. So to the nearest cent, or two decimal places, we have 31,439.49. And now for the second question, we want to determine how long it will take for Jolene to have $69,657.62 in her account, and we're asked to round to the nearest dollar. And because we'll be solving this graphically, we'll go back to the calculator, and we'll press y equals, and because we already have a of t and y1, we'll press enter, and for y sub two, we'll enter a of t equals the desired account balance, so we'll have y sub two equals $69,657.62. Now to determine when this account balance will occur, we'll find the intersection of these two functions. But before we do this, we do have to set up the window, so let's go ahead and press the window key, and now we'll adjust the horizontal and vertical axes. Remember, the horizontal axis represents the number of years. Let's go ahead and start at negative five, and let's go out to 20. Again, we're just making educated guess here. And let's scale it by fives. We can ignore the scaling for the x and y axes. But let's go ahead and set the x scale to five. That's how often we'll have a tick mark. And now for the y axis, or vertical axis, we know it has to go as high as this value here, so let's go ahead and start at negative 5,000, and we'll go up to, let's say, 80,000. If we don't get a nice view of the two graphs, we'll just come back and adjust these. Let's press Enter, and let's change the Y scale to 5,000. Again, there'll be a tick mark every 5,000. Let's press Graph and see how we did. So here's the exponential function, and here's the constant function. Notice how we need to increase the x-axis or go further to the right to find our point of intersection. So we'll press window and let's change the x maximum from 20 to let's say 35. And we'll press enter and try again. There's the exponential. There's our constant function. So we're looking for the x-coordinate of this point of intersection, which is really t, for our application problem. So to find this point of intersection, we'll press second trace for calculation, option five for intersection, so five. And now it's asking for the first curve, we'll press enter. It's asking for the second curve, we'll press enter. When it says guess, 
We could move the cursor closer to the point of intersection like I am now, but we don't have to. Once it's close, I'll go ahead and press enter again and notice how the coordinates of this point of intersection are given here below. We're asked to round t to the nearest year. Remember on the calculator, t is actually x. So we can see the account balance will reach this amount or the amount of $69,657.62 after 23 years. So we solved this problem using the TID4 graphing calculator. I think I'll do this again using the grapher from Desmos.com. So if you're interested, you may want to watch that as well.